Hello and welcome to another episode of In Retrospect. Uh, my name is Brandon Forbes, and to my left here I have Jason Burks, CEO and uh, founder. CEO. Custodian I'm, slash CEO right here. <laughs> of Retrospect, a uh, video production company located in Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, of all places. And then uh, Nathan Groves, he is he has seven titles, I think. Yeah. What are some of those? Uh, accounts, project management, mobile post app production, orchestrator, <laughs> app, yeah, Slack. Not the custodian. Yeah, not the custodian. Jerk. Somehow I got out of that one. I don't know. <laughs> and then for uh, for the first time, we have a, a special guest, Taylor Burks. She is hey, the guys. marketing coordinator for uh, the Little Lighthouse, which is a nonprofit. Uh, in Tulsa, Oklahoma for uh, kids with special needs, which is uh, just such an incredible place. We've done a lot of work with them. Um, and that's kind of what the topic is today. Uh, Nathan, you want to kind of start us off with that? Yeah, I think that uh, for this, we're talking about live events moving to virtual events. Um, and we're privileged to be working on this for the Little Lighthouse right now, actively working on this right now. So we thought it was a perfect timing to jump in and discuss a little bit about how and like what point the, the garden party, which is called, I'll let you talk on that here in a second, at what point the live event moved to virtual and the steps that we're actively taking right now to make that happen. So Taylor, tell us a little bit about the garden party. Yeah, so the garden party is the Little Lighthouse's biggest fundraising event of the year. It's super fun. It's a brunch that usually happens in April, but this month it was in May. Um, and people just come, they get dressed up. A lot of people, friends meet up for the first time in a while. And it's just a great, great event. And so, yeah. And so in this fundraising event, it's held at a big uh, Cox uh, Convention Center here in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and thousands of people show up and they have all of these things you can do. And it's actually a really great time. And if you're in Tulsa ever, you should attend one of these if you can. Um, so obviously right now, when this is being recorded, we're in the COVID environment where a lot of uh, not in this room, right? <laughs> We're good. but a lot of the world is obviously canceling live events. At what point did you know that the garden party had to go from actual in-person live to virtual? Yeah. So I think it was about two weeks ago that we kind of discussed the possibility of that happen happening. Um, and then when Cox business center closed down events through May, um, we were kind of like, they told us that we could either postpone it or we could get a refund on our event date. And I think all of us were kind of like, well, we don't really know how long all of this is going to last and what a great way to be innovative and creative through this time. And so we're like, all right, let's jump in. Let's try doing it virtual. And then we we're all like, oh, we have absolutely no idea how to do a virtual <laughs> event. Um, and so when we started brainstorming, there was... Um, I retrospect films always does the video for garden party, as you guys know, because you're retrospect films, but <laughs> <laughs> I reached out to Jason or I talked to Jason being that he's my husband and <laughs> bonus. <laughs> bonus. She reached out um, to me at I, dinner. At dinner. <laughs> and I was like, hey, She's like, would you like your dinner? Because if you would, you can make a virtual video. For the little exactly. Lighthouse. <laughs> but no, I was like, I really feel like this is such a cool opportunity to do work together. A, and then B just do something really cool that isn't being done right now. I mean, most live events have just canceled. And so I think, I mean, obviously churches are still going on a live platform and there have been live events done before like conferences and stuff, but I don't think a gala has ever been taken virtual. And right. so we're really pumped just to see where this goes and um, just to give back to the community during this time too, to create something really fun for the community to participate in for right. the first time ever. So Jason, when she reached out across the table at dinner time, <laughs> it, so what happened in your mind thinking, okay, how do I go from the idea to something practical? Like, okay, we, virtual party, how do we do this? And what steps, like actionable steps did you take? Yeah, well, I, th I think it's a, you know, the garden party is interesting, just, you know, promoting the little lighthouse and and really all you're trying to do is connect to people that 
love the little lighthouse and let them know about what the little lighthouse does and tell stories and 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 all these different values as to why people would want to give money to little lighthouse and, and so even though you know quite frankly that does really well in an in-person environment and and there's reasons why that's great um, I mean, isn't that exactly all that video has ever done is move people and tell a story and, um, you know, make them make them motivated to feel certain ways about different things. And so, you know, my first thought was, I think the big question we had was, OK, do we do this <clears throat> live, like live, live, or do we, do we produce it and then let it, let it, you know, go out live, uh, but pre-produce it. And, you know, we both, uh, you know, we've been going to church on the move live lately. <laughs> so each weekend we wake up and, and, and watch the, you know, pastors on there and worship on there. And we thought, well, this platform's interesting. This, this works well. Like this is, this is better than nothing. I'm really glad that this is happening. And so I was like, well, why can't we do that? So, um, we, we juggled and talked about the live versus producing it and then putting it out, um, that day. And we just decided not to worry about technical difficulties. We really wanted to be able to control the message and do a really, really good job with it. Um, and so we quickly moved into, okay, we're going to make a, you know, 45 minute to hour long television show per se in a week or two. And what this thing is going to do is it's going to tell the same stories that would have been told on stage. And it's going to give away the same awards that would have been given away on stage. And it's going to have a talent show of all the little kids like we would have done on stage. And heck, let's go even farther. Let's do a documentary piece about Kenny, the guy who always makes these playhouses, who had a special needs daughter that died in, in the past. And he's been making these in honor of her. And they've been bidding them off, you know, for years now for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Like these little stories that have never been told. I mean, some of them, as we're diving into them, I'm like kind of, I wouldn't say like freaking out, but I'm like, wow, this is such a great story. How did I not know this? I've been, you know, volunteering with them for, you know, five, six, seven years. And uh, so, yeah, it's, it's, I think, I, I, you know, I think that everybody is talking about how do we, you know, look for opportunity or the good parts of what's going on, because obviously it can seem really dark with everything that's going on in the world. And this has done exactly that. Like, as we work on it, I'm like, oh, people that have never heard of The Little Lighthouse are going to hear of The Little Lighthouse. Mm -hmm. People that would never go to that banquet are going to see this video. People that aren't even believers, that that have no interest in, in helping out Little Lighthouse, well, they're going to see it too. Like, there's going to be a lot of people that this will reach so much more people than it normally reaches. And so um, I know that, uh, and Taylor, you might have something to add to that, but um, you know, I, I know a lot of the teachers and all of you guys have had to take the same approach. Like, like you were saying the other day, like, what was it? The good and the, the, uh, happy and the hard, the happy and the hard or <laughs> yeah. whatever. But yeah, I mean, what are your feelings on, on all that? Yeah. I mean, I totally agree. I feel like it's been such a unique situation interviewing the teachers and the therapists and just seeing really how there's this connection about what's happening in the world right now, how we're, um, learning to adapt to this new normal and how that's what Little Lighthouse helps these kids do. And I feel like that messaging has been really cool to, yeah, just see the reality of that. And I'm really pumped for this. I feel like we're getting something really unique that we might not have gotten if we had done a live event. We had a conversation about how if you change your environment, mm -hmm. um, and right now with this, you know, virus world, it's forced us to change our environments, our physical environments yeah. as we've moved home and moved away from people. But it's also created an opportunity an almost like forced creativity. Yeah. And what you said, I think is kind of plays, but talk about how maybe there's something with that, with um, maybe new ideas that have come up and you've hit on a little bit, Jason, but maybe there's new uh, marketing messages or advertising or pushing or, um, like, I love the idea that in this time when there's been a, a force of an environmental change, you know, with we are having to move ourselves apart and all of a sudden we have to be creative, that now more people are going to know about the Little Lighthouse than they would have before. Yeah. Um, you know, I, uh, one thing I always say anytime that I'm writing a script is, you know, or I don't always say it, I guess I always ask it, is, you know, what are the parameters? Like, what am I working with? Like, what stories have to be told? Who's going to hear them? When does it have to be done? Where does it have to get shot? Who are the actors I can use? You know, these are all questions you ask yourself. And, and they're important because they give you 
these parameters that like force creativity. You know, there's nothing worse than when someone's like, write anything you want. And it's like, yeah. I don't know what to yeah. do with that. Yeah, that, that <laughs> does not help me. Right? That does not help me. <laughs> Tell me like, you know, that it has to be shot at sunset, like mm -hmm. in the mountains somewhere. Mm -hmm. And I have two hours for six consecutive days to do it. Okay, I can write that, you know? So I think this is kind of like that in that we have these really unique parameters where it's like, um, the world we live in right now is, is, is interesting and those parameters are interesting and how will this be perceived and how can we do this safely and yeah. how can we be advocates of, you know, all the CDC rules, but, mm -hmm. uh, how can we shoot with the cameras far away from everybody? Mm -hmm. But then, um, you know, how can we realize that people still care and people want to help support these kids and people, n nobody's saying, Hey, I don't want to, I don't want to help you know, sponsor a kid or help give money to little I house. They just, they, you just have to do something. You have to reach out to those people for anything to occur. And honestly, half the people that, that really help run this, this organization, they're the same every year. And so we know that they're anxiously awaiting. They're like, what is this? Okay. So I can't come live. All right. I'll put on my garden party hat. I'll sit at my home, I'll log in live, I'll be excited, and I'll still give to something that's really meaningful to me. Um, and so, yeah, the process has been, you know, I mean, I guess at the end of the day, it's the same thing we always do. Lots of cameras, lots of writing, lots of shooting, uh, lots of people using their phones to shoot. <laughs> Uh, yes. That is one thing. Normally, we would go into the little lighthouse and we would film all this beautiful footage. Well, now we've we've Taylor has reached out to all the parents and teachers and therapists and said, all that stuff that you shoot on your phones that you don't know what it's for. Well, guess what? This is what it was yeah. for. We need you to send it to us because that's our cover footage that we're going to use because we don't get to see these kids to film them. So, I mean, some of those little factors are just like. In some ways, I'm like, whoa, we might actually have something more authentic yes, and more meaningful absolutely. than we could have ever had with all the time in the world and all the cameras in the world and, and unlimited resources and locations to film. Now we're going to get like the true reality from the way things occur. Yeah, so. you get it at the moment that it happens. That was something I loved about it too, is like a beautiful video is a beautiful video and it's really inspiring and meaningful, but you get these iPhone videos from these these therapists in the moment when these kids are making these breakthroughs and you do just have this authenticity that I think people are really going to experience at this garden party. Yeah. I think I just hearing all these interviews, I mean, I think we've, you've probably interviewed more people in the past <laughs> two or three days and you have probably in the whole beginning of 2020. But, uh, I, I, I wonder if we're going to be, or we, we'd be getting way more authentic interviews and answers and responses from these people in these interview settings than we would if they were in front of, you know, however many people are at the garden party and, you know, they're kind of, maybe we get stage fright, but we're sitting them down in an environment where they're comfortable and they're able to talk to us. And like, I just wonder, like, maybe this is, we're going to get an even better response, you know, more donors and more, obviously more people are going to see it because it's online, but I don't know. It's, it's exciting. I'm really excited to see how it turns out and just see the, the results and we can look back and hopefully the little lighthouse is like, that was a success. Like that was worth yeah. it. And I think to play off of that, I think that people are really going to be able to relate to the message of this video more so because we're experiencing it in a different way. Like, I think people are going to be able to relate to these kids, to our mission in a way that they never have before, because right now in this moment, we're having to learn to adapt to the world too. And like, that's something that these kids experience every single day is learning to the, adapt to the world around them. So I think this message that the Little Lighthouse is putting out through this through this virtual event is going to be so applicable to a bigger audience this time, which is going to be really cool. That's so incredible. Yeah, that's a great message. I mean, honestly, this could have some incredible reach and I, I'm excited to see that how it ends up for sure. Yeah. All, all that aside, maybe we could just kind of hit real quick, Jason, like on the execution of all of this, like how obviously it was, it was thought about and it, it, the ideas came about, but then the realistic execution and making it happen, like how has that been? 
Yeah, you know, it's it's funny because at Retro, you know, there's there's about 20 of us that work here and at least half those people, actually more than half those people are working from home now. And the cool thing about what we do is literally like my editors and visual effects artists and designers, everybody can just take their computer and their hard drives and go home and work on them, which is really awesome. And so, you know, there's been a small handful of us here at the studio, um, but we have, I mean, literally today is, what is today, Thursday? Today's Friday. Friday. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's what's going on these days. I don't know what day it is, but it was, it was literally one week and a day ago that we were all sitting on a conference call and going, what, what are we, what are we going to do? And we're like, I, I don't know. We're going to do something. Mm -hmm. And then now we have 95% of the assets have been captured. So, you know, we scheduled, we got people here. We interviewed a ton of people. Uh, we've got people out there on their phones, shooting interviews with their phones and sending those to us. And we, you know, given them, you know, you gave them a lot of the guidelines and the the coordination of that stuff. And, uh, you know, uh, Hightower has been out with Kenny, the guy building, shooting a little documentary of all that stuff. And at the snap of the finger, I mean, and, and, and quite really, this is something that if we were to have planned this whole thing, we would have spent like, we've been talking about this in December. Oh, yeah. We'd be like, oh, we got this massive project that's going to be so difficult and gigantic, and it's going to be 45 minutes long. And how are we going to do it? And it's going to require like hundreds of people helping out. And seven days later, we're, we're almost done. And, yeah. and now all that footage is off, you know, with the different editors here at their houses and they're working on it. They're working hard, putting all that stuff together. And, you know, next week, I'm sure that we'll start, put, put, I'm sure by next Friday, we'll probably have a good chunk of this thing done. We'll be proofing stuff. So uh, it's awesome. I'm really glad that, um, that Retrospec has a, uh, a team that has a good attitude, that is flexible, that is energized, it's ready. Um, you know, obviously Taylor's been a tremendous amount of help. I don't know how many videos you have collected from parents. Is, do you have a number on that yet? I don't. They've actually just been sending them straight to Adam. Oh, so, really? But, <laughs> Adam's inbox is probably just full. Yes. <laughs> but on shoot days, I gained about 500 videos. 500. So. That's, That's a lot. incredible. Yeah. <laughs> it is awesome. So hey, it's cool, you know. I mean, I mean, heck, I mean, yesterday we shot a commercial for a client with an iPhone. Yeah. And was... we had the iPhone in one location, we took it to another location. They each shot their parts. We had the script. You know, nobody had to interact with anyone. We took the footage back, edited it, and that thing went out today. I mean, it's out there on social media right now, advertising for that that client. So it's a new day and time, and it requires energy and flexibility. But I mean uniquely, that's kind of all I've ever tried to surround myself with and bring into this company here is just people that are energized, optimistic, and flexible. So I've had a few people um, since this all happened where they had a virtual events <clears throat> or sorry, live events, and they've had to either postpone or cancel. What would you say to somebody right now who's hearing this that we may have worked for that's, you know, what, what inspiration could you give them from a virtual event? And mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're considering it What's what's the next thought? What's the next step? You know, it's like anything. You start by writing down what are you trying to achieve and who you're trying to speak to, and and yeah, there's a little bit of work that goes into it. But um, quite frankly, uh, you know, you get the right people in the right room, and and things can happen quite easily. So I've this has been really exciting to me, and and I, you know, everybody keeps saying like, oh, thank you so much, you guys are doing so much, and oh my gosh, and acting like you know we just like you know built a skyscraper, and I'm like. I mean, we only spent a couple of days on it. Like, <laughs> this is what we do. <laughs> so, well, we are personally very grateful for what you do. <laughs> well, hey, it yeah. takes a team. So, yeah. Taylor, when is the event, and when can we? Where can we tune in? Yeah, the event is on May second at ten a.m., and you can tune in at GardenParty Live. So it's really easy, and we are excited to see you there. That's awesome. Well, we're gonna put links for all of that, and you know, a link to the little lighthouse. If you guys haven't heard of them or, or, you know, looked up what they do. It's pretty incredible. Um, I don't think you can watch a video without crying or just, you know, being so overwhelmed with emotion after seeing these kids and, and what they're going through and how they're just, they're amazing and so inspirational. But uh, I think that's all we got for today. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe and uh, we will see you on the next one. Bye.